This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, host of Southern Remedies, Relatively Speaking. Join the conversation every Tuesday at 11 as we dissect issues that are important to you and your family. That's Relatively Speaking, Tuesdays only on MPB Think Radio. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech. This is Abram Nanny with Sabir abdul Haq, an IT expert. Today we're ripping a page out of Next Stop Mississippi's book and highlighting an event taking place right here in Jackson this weekend. But it's much more of our own nerdy, geeky vibe. So, MPB Zone, Clark Lee, and the owner of alternative culture store Offbeat, Philip Rollins join us today to talk about Jackson's Anime Fest. With dozens of guests and vendors, Anime Fest promises to be a good time for all of those who attend. Email everydaytech at mpbonline.org if you have any questions or comments. And of course, don't forget about the Talk to Us feature on the MPB Public Media app where you can record a voice or video message and send it straight to us at Everyday Tech. Now, Sabir, how's it going, man? How are you doing? It's been okay, man. Uh, surprisingly, somewhat of a slow mo- morning. I ain't going to say just completely just, you know, grinded to a halt or pause. But after yesterday with the, the Facebook meta and everything, it froze. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, th- today so far has actually been pretty quiet in terms of different things. It could be worse. So yeah. I'm knocking on wood. Yeah, I imagine <laughs> IT world could always be worse. It always could. It always could. We always just want to remind people. I know we've talked about it in previous stations before, in previous episodes before. Always, always use two-factor authentication. Always. Don't just rely on just your password. Please don't rely on just your password. Use two-factor authentication. Uh, You can, you know, touch bases with friends, family. Just do a quick little Google search on how to use the two-factor authentication, especially for your bank accounts, for anything uh, private and everything else. Do not rely on uh, on just a password no more. Yeah, especially not if your password is password. Right. Oh my god. Yeah, we had <laughs> One, that two, conversation. Three, four, yeah. We had that conversation. We I we you and I know the person. I talked to you offline about that, Philip, mm-hmm. but uh I fussed at that person cuz they told me that their password is password and then she begged, "Sabir, don't talk about me." <laughs> mm-hmm. no. And then and then you put her on the radio. I put, I put her on the radio. Oh, she she's still uh she's still anonymous. She don't know she I ain't said a name. Yeah, I ain't yeah. said a name. But uh, it's hilarious. It's it's hilarious. But please, please, folks, you know, if you hear our voice, please use an authenticator, two-factor authentication. You got any questions, touch bases with your favorite IT guy or gal and uh, get on out there and, you know, answer some questions because it's real. These folks are getting really crafty out here. You don't want to be scammed. You don't want – and we talk about AI on here and sometimes how people are using – AI for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that you're not a victim of AI for different things. Just just be careful. Make good choices. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we're talking today about this weekend's anime fest. Yes, um I gotta ask you, have you have you watched much anime? Oh, I know Okay. I know we've had a few conversations about like Naruto. <laughs> there was a one there was an anime, young anime the anime a long time ago called Fist of the North Star. That was my introduction to anime when okay. it first came out. Like super long ago, when way back when. So yeah, I'm a diehard anime fan. Okay, and cool. Me and, me and my mid kid Colin, we we're the we're the anime nuts. He he just learned uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> so he's like, what? When? Why? Where has this been all my life? So, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I I consider myself much more of like a casual anime gotcha. watcher. Like I, there's I gotcha. several that I enjoy, but mm-hmm. they're all like the big shows. Like I grew up on Airbender, right? And uh, you know, like I like Full Metal Alchemist, oh, and My yeah. Hero Academia, yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, I said I was not gonna bring you guys in until later. I gotta ask you guys. So, Philip, what what is your? Do you watch much anime? I watch a lot of anime. Yeah. Actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so what have you been watching lately? Lately, I've been going back and trying to discover or rediscover like old 90s and 80s anime. Mm -hmm. So I've been watching stuff like Riding Bean, uh, Dirty Pear. um, It's another one called uh, Gunsmith Cats that I really like. Uh, Gotcha Man. So Mm -hmm. it's it's a a lot. Uh, Gotcha Man was called Battle of the Planets Mm -hmm. for people that want to have some familiar or g-force so mm-hmm. um i've been kind of going back to the old stuff i've been keeping an eye because i read a lot of manga which is mm-hmm. japanese comics mm-hmm. and uh trying to f- figure out what's going to be like the next big 
uh, thing that's going to be adapted to the anime, and one that's coming out this year is going to be Kaiju Number Nine, um, and that's one I'm really looking forward to. It's about this guy; he gets infected with um, a kaiju is like a big monster, so he gets infected with this monster stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the planet has, or the area has, like these this task force where people would fight these giant Godzilla-like creatures. Mm. With like guns and weapons, and they turn the kaiju that they kill, they turn them into weapons that they can utilize. Okay. And but he gets infected to where he becomes a kaiju, and he but he's still sentient, so he's able to like kind of use that power for good and whatnot. But it's very kind of wacky and stuff like right, that. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, Clark, I was introduced to you as a you, or you were introduced to me as like the anime guy in the building, um, or something like that. So I'm guessing. I don't have to ask the same question. Have you watched anime? I have uh, watched anime I, from the uh, 80s as well, watching uh, B- Battle of the Planets, a uh, couple episodes of uh, Speed Racer as well. But my my big introduction was uh, uh, Japan anime on uh, Toonami back when it back when it came out. It was. Uh, it was Robot Circus and Vampire Hunter D, mm-hmm. the okay. original ba- ba- Vampire Hunter D. Classic. And that's was they would air those at night, mm-hmm. and it was just one of those fantastic just immersions into the right. into it. Yeah. But uh, sit, but going through being part of the uh, con circuit, I've met a lot of the My Hero Academia, My Hero yeah. Academia people. Yeah, yeah, and they're. Um, they're they're very good and they're it's a it's an interesting show. I've made it through about three and a half, four seasons. Mm. Yeah. I'm I'm completely up to date with what has been put on streaming services so far. Mm. So I, I've enjoyed my hero academia a good bit. Wait till you get into the manga. Oh, the, that's the what everyone says. Much I, deeper. I <laughs> dude when I learn how to read, it's gonna be over. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you read right, right to, to left. left. Right to left, yeah. right to left, right to yeah. left, right to yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh so historically what have been like you guys is Severe, what what has been your favorite? Um, like what really got me into I don't know if you met uh me and the twins, good friend Bill, but uh uh but when I was back at Southern what really re I guess re invigorated my love for anime was Naruto. I, you know, mm-hmm. love the story. You have the main character, Naruto, who's been through all kinds of things in his life, suffered loss at very uh, young, suffered bullying, suffered, you know, acting out, you know, and everything else. And it just really kind of struck a chord with me that this young kid and then the whole when I even even younger than I was in, involved with Naruto, I was very much involved with the chakra system and understand my understanding of the chakra system. So to see it weaponized and store and, and basically mm-hmm. kind of like the story the way it had. Then I learned more about Japanese culture in terms of Sasuke being the name of, of a great warrior, the names of great warriors, Orochimaru being the name of a great demon. So these are characters from Naruto. And to hear all these things come out and then have them spelled out so creatively across the seasons by which it went through was amazing to me. And this was when I was still in, this was like my junior year when I was at Southern Miss, when I was introduced to it. I was like, okay. And it just re, but it started off saying like, you know, this this has flashing graphics. Be careful sitting too close to the TV. <laughs> right. You know, it warns you on that epilepsy like, this, warning. This epilepsy warning. Like, be careful. You know, what I'm saying someone may have, you know, you may have, you know, a, a behavioral issue or anything else like that that may be triggered by it because these graphics are about to get real. I think that really kind of brought me into it. And then a couple of folks, uh, you know, back in 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 college, like I said, we started with Naruto and just spiraled back out. You know, with what they call Shonen Jump, which wound up being like the that was the center, and then you spiraled out. So yeah, right. your Vampire Hunter D's that I had watched before, and like I said, the all these other different great ones, of course, uh, Dragon Ball Z, of course, that that also helped be a springboard into all these other different titles that brought me into also mainstream shows like uh, Ghost in the Shell, which later became a movie, whether you liked it or didn't like it, but Ghost in the Shell, which became an actual live action movie and was more brought into Western culture. I mean, all these different things. It's, it's really, there's a lot of, there's a lot there out there, but yeah. it started with DBZ and Naruto. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it appeals to so many people because like, there's so many different stories that can be told. Like, oh, yeah. I, like one of my friends that was way into anime got into it, uh, you know, like how everyone else does. 
and then he was watching rom coms at some point mm. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it, there's so many different stories that can be told, and you can really just go as far as you want. Like right. there's no there's no well, I mean there is budget limits, hmm. but like the like you're hand drawing stuff, so they they go in like in so many different directions. Like right. it like the end of Full Metal Alchemist and stuff. I, like, right. I'm not gonna talk about it, but mm. like they they try to become god or whatever mm-hmm. and you can just go so far with all mm-hmm. that yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah thanks for listening to mpb think radio and tuning in to everyday tech this morning my name is abram nanny i've got sabir abdul Haq here with me if you have questions or comments email them to everyday tech at mpbonline.org i said in the intro we're joined by one of mpb's own clark lee in studio who is involved in this anime slash convention community here in jackson clark welcome to the show Thank you for having me here. Yeah, official introduction. So uh, i got to ask, you know, what is it? For, for everyone listening, I say you're NPB. What, what do you do at NPB? I uh, work with promo. I work in the programming de- department. I'm in promos, and I'm working with the production department. I, uh, I, I direct, run camera, just anything that, that's needed for, for the production. Okay. Yeah, so that, that – uh, and all around. All around. Yeah. <laughs> all around mm-hmm. thing. And we also have the owner of Alternative Culture Store Offbeat located here in Jackson on here with us. Philip Rollins, thanks for joining us in studio with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate you guys both being on. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you started, Clark, getting into involved with the Mississippi Anime Fest. I was drafted. Okay. <laughs> my, uh, my best friend is the lawyer for the Comic-Con company that is... that is doing the anime fest and he used to be my, my boss at, at a comic book store we became best friends and i was like oh you know come on and, and help and i've always been i always liked cons so he sort of drafted me into helping out and i got uh, worked my way into being into guest relations right so your work is not just with anime fest it's with the convention oh, with circuit the and everything yeah well, the the conventions that uh, VX VX Five E events puts on. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, Philip, what about you? How are you, how have you been involved with uh you know how did how did Offbeat get started and how did that uh transfer into the sort of culture that you guys have got built around? Yeah. So Offbeat, we we've been around for we're approaching t- our ten year anniversary and we will have a um, we carry records comics designer toys anime figures manga and so we've always been in touch with the anime community I've grown up with it and so these are things that I was like well we need a store here in the city mm-hmm. that carries these things so instead of having just one comic book shop or a record store i said let me combine these things because most people have similar interests so mm. even the records i have anime soundtracks like dragon ball and oh, cool. uh, studio ghibli and and some others as well too um but you know we're starting every two every second sunday we're starting an anime and manga club for people that you know if they can't make that um the convention or if they're overwhelmed by it they can come and or if they want to learn about more manga and anime they can come to the shop on the second uh, every second Sunday and come and you know um, learn about new manga or discover new manga meet like minded people mm. um, one of my best friends she's a cosplayer so she can do like you know your in- introduction to cosplay nice. I have a regular customer he's in the Gumpla so he's planning on doing the Gundam building workshop which we used to do before COVID <laughs> but right. they kind of got yeah. killed so mm. the, we have like set up tables and people like build and you know get tips and how to sand and cut your nibs and everything like that but we're also going to be you know having discounts for people that are active in the community because we want um, the community to be active in person not just online and as well because mm. anime in my community are very active online mm. so you know we're going to have like special discounts and we're going to do like special shirts and everything else like that for uh people who are actively involved as well too so instead of just waiting you know once or twice a year to you know cosplay or dress up or see the people that you that uh love this like have this like-minded interest we're gonna do it once a month right Right, yeah so it's it's really those communities that um like those comic book communities that Mm. come and and come to anime fest so for those that are are not familiar what is anime fest clark it is the statewide uh, con that a uh, convention that is specifically anime oriented, and 
we have uh, we'll, we'll have anime we'll have vendors selling anime material if, if you like it almost any anime show there's somebody selling something mm -hmm. that's that, that, that's there but it's a place where you can c come together and just talk about and uh, experience a anime stuff and, and get to meet uh, hopefully some of the voices of your favorite anime stars right right that's that's one thing I was going to bring up and, and thank you for bringing that up and thank and and first off you got my attention because you know I love Gundam when you said <laughs> you said Gundam I was like whoa hold up I'm a huge fan of Gundam which is a, a robot it's a robot series for folks who are listening never heard of it Gun I'm a huge fan of Gundam you know that one <laughs> but I do love that it's one of the favorite things about comic cons and anime cons and all these different things that are out you get to hear about the you get to meet the voice actors actors that are that are also involved with these i i follow uh uh steven steven j blum who's mm -hmm. known for outlaw i mean excuse me for uh, cowboy bebop most mostly for cowboy bebop a whole lot of other voice acting and uh for a uh, big o he's one of my favorite and he's also a pretty socio-political guy uh and he's also married to one of my other favorite voice uh, voice actors uh Mary Elizabeth McGlynn who plays uh, Matoko Kusanagi from on the English dub of um of uh, Ghost in the Shell and Julia from uh from um from um, Cowboy Bebop as well so she it's great to actually meet these folks and hear from different folks you get a chance I would love to meet either one of them yeah <laughs> there's just like Stephen J. Blum he has his own actual um, and voice acting is amazing mm -hmm. voiceover is amazing it's amazing industry he has his own school Bloombox uh, or Bo yep Bloom Spew Bloom yeah. Spew is, is, is that's him on uh Bloom Spew is his um, IG and Twitter handle. But yeah, he's uh, I mean, they, they, it's great getting a chance to meet these folks and then also understanding their ideologies and philo uh, philosophies of these voice actors. I was hoping someone was going to mention that. If not, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love voice actors. I have his autograph hanging on my, on my wall and, oh. and I, I know his agent. She's a, she's a friend of mine. That's amazing. That's cool. That's cool. amazing. That's is, amazing. It, is it in your office? Yeah. Oh, That's cool. We'll have to take, a picture it of it. Yeah. take a picture of it and then tag him. I've, I've, I've hit him directly. I'm a huge fan of his. I'm a huge yeah. fan of his work. Yeah. So, Clark, you said guest relations mm -hmm. with uh, the convention uh, what what was the company again? Uh, VX5E Events. Okay, so VX5E Events. Well, it's it, it's V and X and and a V, the Roman numeral. Uh, for okay, five okay. Events. Okay, so mm -hmm. you do guest relations for <laughs> yes. them. What is what does that entail? That entails uh, going to get them at, at the airport. Well, arranging everything um, to, to to get them here, uh, picking them up from, from the airport, getting them to to the hotel and and to the venue. Uh, getting things that they may, may need, sort of just being like their their con assistant. Uh, mm. I my main job is during the con is taking care of, of the green room and making sure that they're taken care of at the the con, okay. and just making sure that they're uh, that they and their agents have food, water, uh, mm. making sure that their um, that dietary needs are, are met, and then getting them conveniently back to the airport. Mm. Right. Okay. That's really cool. Mm. That's cool. Mm. I, I, uh, I've been kind of involved with that sort of thing, uh, uh, with winter jam when it comes to Tupelo. I don't know mm. if you guys know what that is. Winter jam. What's winter that? jam. It's like a, it's like a Christian music okay. concert that okay. goes nationwide. Okay. Um, so I've been, uh, the lady, I knew the lady that organized part of that for mm. the Tupelo. So, okay. Uh, okay. Tupelo venue, but that, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Having um, that kind of concierge stuff is, is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and what I hear from both of you, from what you're doing and everything else. And what I hear you saying that also supplements from other stuff that, that you, that offbeat is doing, you're constantly doing things to keep the community healthy and live. Yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. What, what's happening at, at anime fest and some of the other things that offbeat is doing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. so Philip, what does that? What does Anime Fest entail, entail for uh, a comic shop coming coming up? Um. So the Anime Fest is pretty big, and as well as the Comic Con that they do. So they get a lot of out of towners, a lot mm. of people from I think Memphis, Louisiana. Mm. They'll come and see the guests that they'll they'll be there and stuff like that. So I'm right up the street, um, mm. on 109 North State Street, right. and so I'm like. I don't know, three minutes away. Yeah. So a lot of times it's uh, overflow from that, and they will come in and they be like, "Oh, you have this, and hmm. you also have this, and I, I, they ran out of this at the shop, at the convention and stuff like that." Right. Um. So it's 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 pretty interesting. Um. It, it was a time where we had uh, events and parties with uh, one of the vendors. Uh. 
where's the waifu and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he's he's done events at the shop before. Um, this is prior to COVID as well too. But you know, it's a uh, it's you know it's a lot of, you know it's, it's some crossover between yeah, the two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, you yeah. guys kind of work. I mean, you you foster the same culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're parallel community. basically. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So so it what does it mean Clark for you to see like the the culture building and stuff like anime fest has gotten bigger and bigger over the years correct yes uh, what it means to to me and I I like having I like seeing people um look it goes back to like when when Star Wars came, came out back in 77 none of y'all were, were alive <laughs> no <laughs> but it was um you know like you're on the playground and you have you know your different sets of people that may not play with each other but if you have like a common goal like how awesome star wars was mm. you can come together over a certain topic and yeah. the playground can become less bloody interesting and, <laughs> interesting. Well, uh, and uh, at, at the fest you have people that can come together in, in a safe family friendly in, in environment and just it's like oh i didn't know that you knew about this particular anime you know or mm -hmm. I, I don't think that anybody knew about this and yeah. you can come together and get to meet people and if you're um th those that are very c creative mm. can uh and and are good with sewing and, and making things th they bring in that their costumes mm. and, and and they'll wear costumes and you can see it's like oh that's my favorite character oh mm. and then you can mm. bond and form mm -hmm. an instant friendship yeah with a, with, with backgrounds like oh you like um this this particular character you you like um every single character is just <laughs> up, 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 up. It's like oh you, you like th this particular character. oh well, yeah. I, I like it too well you have all this you, you know that you're going to have some similarities yeah because like like th th this character might mean you like so and so 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 yeah. and it'll yeah reverse pyramid out what yeah, it sounds like sure. is it seems like both like in terms of the the both all the different things it's an opportunity for community that's yeah, what, that's, is, what I, that's what i hear from that it's yes. an active opportunity for community for things like the mm -hmm. anime fest for 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 initiatives and, and and organizations like like offbeat and everything else like that and we're glad it was good mm -hmm. to have this kind of conversation because we're actively talking about a way for people to be able to actively have it's an op it's an active opportunity for community it's like you said like it's it's interesting of course i'm i was born in 80 but i mean like i remember the star wars lunch boxes yeah. and things like that but yeah. Yeah. Of course, like when you see that, of course, yeah, you people go across demographics. Yes. They, they go across things. Like I wouldn't really, I don't know that I would talk to this person or that person. But then you see them. They they've got a they've got a a, a pin that talks about my hair academia or that which right. is something which is amazing. Here I am about to be forty four years old, and I was talking to my son's. Uh, he had one of his son's friends had on some Crocs that had like Naruto, uh, the, giblets. The, the, the giblets on them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was looking, I was like, well, was that Sasuke? And they were like, what you know about Sasuke? <laughs> 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 it's, it's hilarious. And it's a, it's a great opportunity. I, I know I come from community where one of the things is talking about the intergenerational model. It is amazing that folks like, I get mm -hmm. we're closer to age than you two, I'm sure. But, uh, but I mean, like we can have a conversation and even younger or older and still have a conversation again it's an opportunity for yeah. The community yeah, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. and uh and i i don't want to be like i'm not trying to stereotype or anything <laughs> uh -oh. but not everyone <laughs> like you can't just go up and not everyone can go up and talk to somebody right 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 um and i like for myself specifically mm -hmm. i i've always had this nerdy you know these nerdy interests and yeah. and stuff like that it's all good um and I've never been good at approaching and talking to someone. Mm -hmm. So when you come up to these conventions and stuff, you see someone like, like you said, with your favorite character, mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. for me, it was a, my, one of my lifelong best friends. Uh, we met because my brother and him had the same star Wars puzzle Nice in mm -hmm. kindergarten. Okay. So like, because you have those common interests, you, you feel, Oh, there's a way to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a way to approach somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, like an icebreaker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, indeed. We'll continue talking to, with Clark and Philip about Anime Fest 2024. Email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. We're glad you found our show, Everyday Tech, on MPB Think Radio. This is Abram Nanny, still here with Sabir abdul Haq and Philip Rollins and Clark Lee. If you have an event or convention or you think MPB or specifically Everyday Tech should cover, email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. Now, today we're talking about the event that's happening this weekend, March 9th and 10th. It's called Anime Fest right here 
at the Mississippi Trades Mart here in Jackson, and we're joined by Clark Lee and Philip Rollins to talk about that. So with these conventions, personalities are always a big draw for people wanting to come in. So who who can people expect to be there? Well, we have anime voices because it's anime con, mm-hmm. um, and they they branch out to do s- several things. So we have a uh, Kaiji Tang, Adam MacArthur, Keith Silverstein, E.M. James Corlett, Sherry Lee, Brianna Knickerbocker. I have met Bri- Brianna and I've met met Adam. That they're nice. Uh, Erica Harlacker. I've met a- Erica. Uh, Ann Yatko, Xander Mobus, Creek Wilson are our, our main draws. Okay. And we have as a, we have our cosplayers, a Little Miss Cosplay, Geek Out Studio, and Kazuna Cosplay. And they'll be dressed in different characters. Yes. And they'll all be there to uh, for you to meet, greet, and get autographs or get something signed if you have like a plushy or, yeah. or, or or poster or yeah or, or or figurine that that is just you know you just love you can go and get it signed and right like, right and right. that's your little piece of yeah that's your that's your stardom. very oh. special memorabilia that you come Absolutely. Back with. and it's it's <clears throat> for people into the community that's mm-hmm. like Imagine going to like a basketball game, and then you get to meet the basketball players at right. the end of the game, right? Yeah. Like or get a that, baseball signed, or something. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very yeah. similar. So I saw on the website that two of the guests actually voice main characters on one of the biggest shows running now, which is Jujitsu Kaisen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's that's sick, honestly. Like that that's that they so that you guys were able to get someone mm-hmm. or yeah. some people that are so like high profile, yeah. Um, which I, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names, but uh, <laughs> shout out to them for coming. Hey, that, that's that's awesome, and yeah. then that's definitely a show I'm about to jump into. I actually a good friend of mine, Cassandra. Uh, she's the one that put me on Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. I need to jump on that. So that's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. Um, and I, now I've imagined you've gotten to meet a lot of cool people because of these events. Yeah. Um, so is there is there anyone that sticks out to you specifically? At, like looking back on the past events and stuff, is there someone that you're like that was a really cool like, mm-hmm. or like some like dream person that you're able to meet? Uh, not. I'm sorry well, to put you on no, the spot. No, 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 no. There's it, and one instantly comes to to mind. It's just there's a there was a story in there. It was uh, before I I was. Still working the, the the rooms, I was asked. Uh, my, my my buddy was asked if he could take a, a guest to the to, to the hotel, and I go, oh well, can, can I come along? And then they're like, well, are, are you going to fan girl out? And I'm like, well, you know, it depends. <laughs> it really you know, depends. I, I thought yeah. it was like some voiceover person I'd never heard of, right? And I was told it's John Reese Davies. Oh, like, I can behave. Yes, Sala <laughs> and uh, Gimli on um, on the twin t- the. Uh, Lord, Lord of the Rings, Rings. Okay. yeah, yeah, and I, I knew him as Sala from Indiana Jones and the Last Cru- Crusade, and from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Interesting. And I got in the car, and we're we're driving, and, and he's talking, and I'm we're, we're, we're all talking, and the Beatles uh, radio station w- was on, and it was at the time when the movie Yesterday mm-hmm. was on, mm. and I said to my friend, "Hey, we're we're gonna go see this movie, and you know th- this mo- this song is in the film." And we were talking, and we talked all the way till we got to the, the Hilton. Hmm. And I got out and opened the door for Mr. Davies, and he goes, "Oh, you know, thank you, and uh, get in there, you Beatles find you." And I, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I got in there, and then he sticks his head in, and he goes, "I knew them," oh, and, and shuts and the, the, the door. door. Yes, and it indeed. was like for for ten seconds, my buddy and I were just like. <laughs> Silence and it was like, and that's how you end a con. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but that's the, it. Uh, the 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 last con uh, I, I attended, uh, I got to spend uh, an hour in mm. the in the back just waiting for the the guest what, what was waiting to, to to go to the airport. Mm. Got to spend an hour just having a great conversation with Sean Aston. Mm. I'm just oh, just yes. chilling out. Mm-hmm. And you know, he, it, it he just seems like, ah. like just the coolest person, mm. like so nice. He's a dad. Mm. Yeah. He just, it, it's like sitting down and talking with someone's dad. Mm. And it was just, and he's like, yeah, you know, I need to, need to get back on my, uh, on my, on my, uh, treadmill and I need to get going. You know, I need <laughs> he's just, 10 pounds just and, a regular guy. Oh, he's just a regular guy. <laughs> One so, of the nicest people in the world. So yeah. for people that are, may not know for off the top of their head, Sean Ashton, that is, Samwise Gamgee, mm-hmm. Rudy from Rudy. Rudy yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, more recently, he was in Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that is that is super cool. The uh, Big Bang Theory. He was one of the uh, 
doctors that was trying to rip off oh, really? the, um, the Nobel Prize. Mm. Oh, okay, I never watched much Big Bang Theory personally, yeah. but it's it, it, big it's fan of Sean Astin, and he's uh, he's John Astin, uh, Gomez Adams from the TV show The Adams Family, right. son, and Patty Duke. Uh, okay. That has got for, a, for, mm. for the older people. Oh, that's that, well, that, that, I was not a, aware of that. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. a Those good one. Yeah. That is that is a, that's a good good resume there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, Philip, in your line of work, you see the the general excitement for these shows and books and the community that comes with it. So, do you think? The community you see will show out at Anime Fest this weekend. Oh yeah, they always will. They, yeah. they, they ask me, Are "You going?" I'm like, "No, I'm cool, man. But go have fun." And so <laughs> I'm, it, I'm stuck it. at the store, so yeah. it's just me. Well, so it's a big, it's a big deal at the store for you guys. At the yeah, same time. yeah. So I mean, we're stocked up on like new manga and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, the creator, I just got in, and I'm excited to dive into it myself. The creator of Full Metal Alchemist, he has, uh, they have a new manga okay. that I'm diving, going to dive into okay. sometime this week when I have a breather. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't sell out, so right. you know, yeah, right, right. Can 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 what is the? Can you say the name? What's the name of it? I can't remember the name. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. I, I have to, I have well, to look and while see. you while you look that up, I know. Uh, look, I'm here. I'm here to tell them. Uh, I'm planning on. I told Philip. Uh, I'm a, like I said. I'm a huge Gundam fan. And he's got this gun that's behind his counter. I'm like, bro, I've got to get that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so before the Anime mm -hmm. Fest gets here, before all these folks come here and they make their way to Offbeat, say, oh, look, they got a local spot. Before they come and make their way to Offbeat, I got to make sure to get that before you gotta someone beat beats. I got to beat them to it. Yeah. Somebody's going to get there before I do. And it's I'm, I'm it's funny. Sad. So for people that don't know, Gundam or Gunpla is basically like these Snap-on model kits. Mm -hmm. uh, they're from Japan. Correct. And... It, there's no glue required for these model kits. Mm -hmm. And once you fully put it together, it's a fully posable figure and everything. So they come in different grades. There's like mm -hmm. SD, which is super deformed, like chibi cute uh, mode. Then there's like a high grade. Then there's a master grade. That's about, that's about eight inches. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to perfect grade. And perfect mm -hmm. grade, you're building like an inner skeleton. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes mm -hmm. they come with like LED lights that you put into that skeleton. Oh, then man. you put the armor around it. I had a customer that came in and just ran him out the blue. He walked in. He said, is that a model? I said, yeah. He said, I'm going to get that. I said, sir, this is like $300. Are you getting this for yourself? Because you? I didn't want him like just to waste money. Right. And so he was like, no, I'm getting it for my son. I said, are you sure? He's like, no, my son puts together Legos all the time. And I said, sir, this is a little bit more advanced. Little Legos. More advanced. He said, well, he puts together Legos in like 30 minutes. And I'm like, are you talking about like big kids? He's like, yeah, I'm talking about like. Uh, Star Destroyer type stuff oh, in, in like an hour or two and I'm wow. like okay then he buys this perfect grade RX-78 which is like the main Gundam comes with LED kits he comes to me I see him the, the following week I say hey how did it go he said he built that in an hour and 30 minutes Wow! and I'm like that is insane right, I say so yeah. he was just dialed into this wow. right. um, so yeah it's it's I hope he comes to <laughs> go to the anime fest if he mm. or you know discovers Gundam because I don't think he knows about his son knows yes. about it. But yeah. I hope you know it leads to a gateway to discovering about these mm. things. So with anime and manga, what we fail to talk about as well too, just like with books and comic books, there's mm. different genres mm. and subgenres. It's not just like oh, it's all about Japan and stuff like that. No, it's about some is about sports. There's um, anime and manga about figure skating, boxing, mm -hmm. basketball, mm -hmm. football. Then you have your rom com stuff. Then there's Shonen, which stands for boy. These are mangas like Naruto, your Dragon Ball Z, My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. Then you have your shoujo, which goes into Sailor Moon, which is like transforming um, powerful girls and women and stuff that have these powers and that can mm -hmm. save the world as well, too. Mm -hmm. Then you have Seinen, and then it goes into, which is like your Power Rangers type stuff. And then you have, uh, what's, what's the one I'm forgetting? You, you got Horror, which Junji Ito is very popular. Right, right. Um, Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul. Mm -hmm. um, then you have psychological thrillers like Monster, which is on Netflix. Y'all should definitely check that out. Okay. Check that out. Okay. It's really, really good. Okay. It's underrated. Um, and so it can go on and on. So if there's something that you like to read as a book or as a show that you like, mm -hmm. there's a there's a manga or an anime that is kind of a 
that can complement what your taste is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My wife loves murder mysteries, just like every modern woman in the world that <laughs> try to. I, I think they're plotting to kill us and take our insurance right, money right, for some right, reason. Right. But anyway, there's Death Note, of course, and then mm. there's other. Uh, there's plenty of other ones that I can't. I'm, 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 my wife finds them. I'm just like, I didn't tell you about this. How are you mm. discovering this? But <laughs> I don't ask any questions. But she she loves it. Um, but going back to the Full Metal Alchemist, it's called the the new book is. Called called Demons of the Shadow Realm. Oh, wow. So we got something new. So it's already three <laughs> volumes in. Right. Wow. This is from the creator of my of, of Full Metal Alchemist, which mm-hmm. is a very well-known anime. Yeah. It, it, and you have the two brothers and how they discovered well, Alchemist. Yeah, I'm rewatching it, was watching it great, right now. It was yeah. a great story. So the same creator has this new title. Yeah, and it's it. basically based on magic from what I gather. So nice. it's more yeah. magic-based and... Um, with the arcane arts and everything as right. well, too. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, you know, you mentioned sports-based anime. If I my my buddy will will hate me if I don't shout out Haikyuu, uh for Haikyuu. volleyball. <laughs> yeah, really good. you a big fan. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, Haikyuu indeed. is really yeah. good. It's yeah. really good. Haikyuu, my, okay. my favorite is a uh, Hajime no Ippo. Big okay. box, big box Boxing. fan. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now we mentioned a lot of like Gundams and stuff, and uh, at Anime Fest, are there going to be like vendors selling Gundams, manga, or mango, however mm-hmm. you say mm-hmm. it? Uh, there will be several. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. there's uh, they'll have if you like banners, if you like uh, Funko Pops, mm-hmm. uh, models. A uh, little uh, one uh, went to one <clears throat> one con, and a guy was uh, had printed a three D print. This is part of everyday tech, three D three D printed um, characters. Mm. Oh, and cool! And I bought a um, for for my dad. My dad's favorite monster is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm. Oh, okay. cool! And, okay. I, yeah. and I bought one. He went home and printed that out and brought it back because it was I, I wanted a little bit larger one than the one he, he had but they they have um what uh, they have backpacks that have uh led lights on nice. them right uh, glasses that have the led um animation uh just so and really games, a lot of imaginative just, what, mm. whatever well not whatever but <laughs> uh a lot of things that that you would want the, the vendors are are there selling. They're gonna yeah. have a nice they sell, like this demon oh, slayer very, swords very, and everything. Right. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, right, oh, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, we've mentioned several times that like people like to cosplay and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so what? Uh, is there anything? Is there going to be some sort of contest for cons- cosplayers and stuff? There's but... always our our big event on Saturday is the costume contest. Oh nice. yeah, uh, nice. we we have panels, uh, Q and A panels with, with the guests until about four forty five, four fifty, and then five o'clock is our costume contest, and that okay. is always the big draw. Right. Yeah, and you will see some very creative co- costumes. You, you'll see some that are like t-shirts, or uh, and you're just having a sword, all the way to teased out eyebrows and mm. eyelashes, mm. Uh, makeup done perfectly, yeah. just spot on, and like screen yeah. accurate costumes, nice. and just like you know, there was like a a big. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's character. I saw that movie last night. Yeah, it's it's yeah. good. Yeah, it is. But it they, is. They, like there was it. one character that was like like Freddy, just that, really? that, that, that big. And then there's people with like the huge scythes that are mm-hmm. like plywood that I'm always like, yeah, that's great now. But in two hours, you're going to be dragging that around. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. That's but dedication. It, <laughs> yeah. It, there's You'll see so many different costumes. Mm. One of the best costumes I saw, it wasn't at, at one of the, the cons, but it was... Oh, it was uh, the uh, the doc had a, a costume cut contest years ago, and they this person came in. He was dressed as a next gen, Star Trek: The Next Generation Borg. Okay, and it, he had the moving Borg. parts. Mm. Yes, oh, and cool. it was just like that is that amazing. Is awesome. That's really but cool. But the, the, the people that come to our our, our costume cut contest. Uh, they don't see their ki- they don't eat at their kitchen tables mm. because it's all beaded out. It's mm. all yeah. fabric. Mm. And sewing machine is like it, it's con season. Yeah. So they're getting their their costumes going. Nice. And yeah. It's nice. Everything from t shirts to screen accurate. Yeah. And it's material, and it is amazing. It's a it's a really cool like creative outlet oh, for these people. Very oh, yeah. big creative. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. Very, very cool. Yeah. Um so the website also mentions like Q Q and A's and panels. Mm-hmm. Um is that is that a charge to attend those? 
Uh, no, the, uh, the the panels are, are, are free. Uh, hopefully, it, it, they, some of the more popular ones can be standing room only. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Sean Astin, as I as I said before, uh, he had like a thousand people at, at his last one, so it was oh, sitting cool. and standing room only. Mm-hmm. But no, the the, the panels are, are are perfectly free. Very Just, cool. and, and as long yeah. as it with, with paid attendance, you can do. Everything at the at the con, right, right. Support these vendors. Check these panels out. You know, see. You know, you know. Come do your cosplay Please. action and enter and everything else. That's amazing. I got a cousin of mine who's an amazing cosplayer. She is awesome. She's from Jacksonville. Cool. And she is like, she'll put something up. I'd be like, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? She's like, I don't know. I'll decide. She and she she actually has a background in belly dancing, mm-hmm. and so she also does these very you know uh, very ornate, intricate kind of actions. And I keep challenging her to do Spiral from X Men. Who is oh, uh, who, I love Spiral. So, and so she and again like and she does. She has a background in belly dancing. Spiral is a six armed. Uh, she get she carries like weapons in every arm, using right. swords, and she 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 does a dance and she teleports. That's or mutant power, right? And so I said, You need to sign up, but you need to make a spiral. Uh, what's well, so I said, you would kill. And so, she every time I talk to her, I'm always sending her information about spiral. I'm like, You need to do spiral, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the spiral, she's got this weird hat on, like a captain's hat, and then like a uh, like, like a, a uh, helmet, it's like a helmet, yeah, it's like yeah. a helmet. And then she's but she's got like all these swords. And mm-hmm. I'm like, This is you, you would kill a spiral. So, it, it, it's amazing. I love seeing cosplayers, it's cool. Yeah, that's yep. that's really cool. So where can yep. people get tickets for this? They can get tickets online and they go they're we have an exclusive ticket provider, T I X R. Tickets will be available also at the door the, the day of. Okay. But they do increase the, the price at the day of the event. If you go to the Mississippi Anime Fest, if you type in Mississippi Anime Fest, you can um, go to the website and go to Frequently Asked Questions, and you will see a place, a link where you can go and, and purchase tickets. Mm. Okay, what is that? The website is Mississippi Anime Fest? Yeah, you can just type it in Google, and it'll it'll pop up, and just click on it, and it'll tell you all, all that you need to know. Very cool, cool very cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now, Philip, what what are some other things that you expect uh, to see at the store? Do you, I mean, like... You're you're gonna see some some cosplays and some mm-hmm. some very dedicated uh, mm-hmm. fans come in that store during this weekend, right? Maybe, maybe. I, it's, you never know. Um, not every and uh, person that's in anime and manga is definitely in the cosplay and stuff like right. that. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll they'll have like you know a shirt on or have a backpack or mm-hmm. you know even Crocs or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, so I may get the casual fan, may uh, who's you know just getting into it, or you know I may have super diehards that. Are coming to cool off <laughs> and nice. take a break um, yeah. out of yeah. costume right. um, per se. So um, I, I expect you know many all garments of life of the community to come through mm. um, this weekend. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, we uh, we're gonna stay here instead of taking our last break. So okay. uh, the questions that I have for you guys. So um, in the future, like what shows or characters would you like to see represented at the com- at the anime fest? What I would like to see. Is a Voltron? Oh, Get that'd be a terrible. lion Voltron. Get out yes, yeah. indeed. Now I have seen video, but I've not seen in in person a a, a, a kid size, maybe like eight years old mm. size, uh, fully transforming Optimus Prime. Wow! Like just like lean over and he can Tuck move in. around, yeah. and, and it's like. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I've seen those videos. But yeah. I would yeah, like to cool. see a full lion Voltron. That would yeah. be bananas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, F- Philip, what about you? What What in the future would you like to see? In the future, man, whether it's... it be like a voice actor, or a cosplayer, or anything like that. As far well as as far as cosplay, I would probably like to see. I'm a big video game person. I'm a big fighting game person. Yeah. There's a whole anime fighting mm-hmm. game community yes. as well. So we right. Guilty Gear stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing like. Some some actual like you know Guilty Gear like maybe mm. Soul Bad Kai Kai Kisuke, mm. um, cosplay maybe even Chip Zanif or uh, my friend um, Gamma Ray Gamma Ray cosplay she did May from uh, Guilty Gear at one point okay. had a giant anchor that she made out of foam yeah. and everything oh, so gosh. it was really cool yeah um, I actually I actually challenged her to do it and she stepped up to the challenge and nice. sold this big giant orange hoodie and everything so wow yeah. well that's that's always cool I always think it's cool to see like Scorpion and Sub Zero 
superhero yeah. mm -hmm. cosplays mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Because that Mortal Kombat's like my favorite franchise. That might be pretty basic, but that's my favorite video game hey. franchise that there is. It's so cool. Yeah. Not a word. The uh, love is the love. That's yeah. what's up. But, Guilty Gear, that's what's up. Yeah, if I if I could see like if I could meet one person at like an anime fest, I'd probably say like <laughs> either Bryce Pappenbrook, who is in he he's a character in My Hero Academia, but he's also the main character in Blue Exorcist, which is okay. something I've been into. Or Dante Bosco. Got you. I've met so, them both. You've met both of yeah. them. That's what's up. Oh my gosh. See, I I just got to meet Stephen Stephen Blum. If I can meet Stephen J. Blum, <laughs> even better if I can meet him and Bo Billingsley, who both of them play the voices of Spike and and, and Jet respectively from Cowboy right. Bebop. If I could meet both of them, I'm I'm cool. And they both did voice voiceovers for The Last of Us for Faction. Oh, yeah, always, yeah, yeah. I'm always talking about oh, The Last of Us. You know The Last of Us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, so, so since I've got you experts here, I have to ask the question: What so, is the the feeling of you know the general feeling of the the live action adaptations that Netflix has been doing recently? Because I, you know, that is very divisive. Mm. This is just for my own personal curiosity. Yes. We're not gonna hold you against it. Hold it against. I anyone. haven't watched any. I, I, I like watching the the breakdowns of, of mm -hmm. the shows, and they they seem to be doing well. The like the the newest uh, Airbender. Yeah. But I'm just more of I'm very classic and very picky with mm. with, with with what I watch. Yeah. So it's I'm not like all this big branch out. I'm like oh right. this little bit here, this little bit here, and right, then I'll like right. stay on that. Right. Right. Yeah. So for me, I have no problem with the live action stuff. Some of okay. it I do, like um, the Yu Yu Show. When I'm a huge Yu Yu Show, that's like mm. my all time favorite anime. So I watched it because I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a chance, and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going out of my way to bash it or anything. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, I have this mindset of, you know, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. And this is this may get somebody else into this, the the the, exactly. the anime. Exactly. Um, the One Piece one was a success, mm -hmm. and it was very well paced, very mm -hmm. well adapted, mm -hmm. casted great, everything. Mm -hmm. The problem with the Yudu Hawk show when I had was the the pacing um, per se, because it was like, oh, it's jumping from this arc to this arc, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's missing some parts here. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. I feel like it was cheating, like you know, people who will probably appreciate it. So um, that was the issue I had with it. But mm -hmm. like the Cowboy Bebop one, that was people hated it. And I was mm -hmm. just like, I think this deserved a chance because yeah. we didn't get a second season. Right. So I would have loved to see that continue on. Right, right. right. Well, all right. That is going to wrap us up for cool. the day. So thanks, Sabir and Clark and Philip and everyone else for tuning in. If you missed any of the show, make sure you listen back to it on your favorite podcasting app or download the MPB Public Media app. Everyday Tech is brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting, Think Radio, and generous contributions from listeners. Our show today was engineered, actually, by Marissa Vaughn. Call screeners, uh, we didn't have any calls today. Sorry about that. I've been your host, Abram Nanny, also the podcast producer. Thank you for tuning in. Up next is Dr. Jimmy Stewart with the original Southern Remedy. We'll be back next Wednesday morning at 10, right here on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.